Fuck. It is February the 18th, 2023, and you're listening to The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. Welcome back to your favorite photography podcast, The Future of Photography, with me, Chris, and with Jeremiah Chechik. Hello. Hello. We're missing Adrian. He's got some family business to take care of. So, yeah, it's the two of us. Um, how's it going in L.A.? Uh, the weekend is filled with many, many art exhibits. We have the LA Art Fair, which is a conglomeration of, you know, I guess hundreds of exhibitors of all manner of art in our convention center. And we have Freeze, F-R-I-E-Z-E, -E, which is another uh, a national or international uh, art exhibit space. They've rented a big hangar here, and uh, there are uh, all manner of, of um, artists exhibiting there, um, as well as the local gallery scene has uh, huge amounts of opening. So it's, it's basically an art week here in Los Angeles, and um, uh -huh. I intend to participate, in fact, yeah, after that this would, podcast. That, that would have been my question. <laughs> that would have been my question. You being an artist... Um, you uh, are you going to exhibit something? Are you going to no, no, participate I, I, in another way? Uh, I'm just going to be a a uh, inspired observer. Um, okay. I I am preparing some exhibits for both 24 and this mm. I think this April um, in New York uh, as part of a group show on. Um, out of orbit, and more later on that. But uh, so I'm, I'm rather busy, and you know, um, I, I just want to be inspired, and and it's a great place to just uh, sense and and experience a huge amount of work from a variety of artists in a variety of genres, in in you know, kind of one uh, geographical uh, location. And that's kind of good. Instead of visiting a hundred galleries, you can do it. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's, um, it's it's efficient. <laughs> it's very even though, efficient. Even even though in conjunction with art, that sounds kind of wrong, doesn't it? It does. But you know, sometimes you'll drive uh, across town or uh, into the city and and experience uh, a gallery, and you'll you'll read about it and walk in and. And the show will be a disappointment, and yeah. you'll think, "Oh, why did I come this way? This way, <laughs> your 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 disappointment or elation can come within minutes of each other, and 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 so it's it's fun. It's a roller coaster. Uh, I, I remember many years ago, I was uh, in, a, in a circle of friends who were into fantasy movies, and there was a fantasy film festival in southern Germany, and uh, they showed within five days. They showed. I don't know, like hundreds <laughs> yeah. of movies, and oh, it was it was it was both amazing to have that much great stuff and also bad stuff on in in one spot. And it was it was I had a kind of a hangover afterwards because of <laughs> so much input in such a short time. So yeah, it's like film festivals generally yeah, can really general. just blow you out. But um, you know, if you're in the mood for it, it's so it's good. So um, you being an artist, uh, is do you do you think you go to these kind of things and you you, you look at these with a different eye than if you uh, if you were not creating yourself? Um, you know, yes and no. Um, obviously, if I'm if I'm just looking at it as a kind of casual observer, I I think I just go there with an open mind and an open heart, really, to just experience what I'm supposed to be uh, feeling or just get in touch with the mood that, that provokes it based on the work. Uh, it also may just get me interested in a specific artist's work who I may come back, circle back, and, and do a much deeper dive in, into their, their work. And often uh, just to be... Um, because like you, I'm a kind of technical fanatic uh, in so many ways that sometimes um, I'll just be inspired less by the subject or, or the output, but more by the technique. And, and I'll go, oh, that's an interesting technique. I, 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 I may be able to take 
all part or just a sliver of it and apply it to my own work and see what happens. So, so I have both the inspiration as a, I guess, a creative technical applier of, of, of different forms into my work, um, which I'll look at a piece with a more, I guess, critical or technical eye. And then, uh, Obviously, I'll just experience the work, you know, uh, say a big uh, painting. I'll just experience for what it is. Um, so, so both are true. Also, it's very interesting to see what, what works are selling in the market, what galleries are having crowds and how they manage to. So it's because the art, you know, I don't want to over romanticize the art scene. It's very much like any business. It's a business. Yes. Yes. It, ha it has its commercial, it's technical, but also it's, um, it's, well, it's creative aspects and everything kind of comes together in a really interesting mixture. Yeah, you know, setting prices, for example. Like when one goes to the movies, one pretty well pays a flat fee. Um, you know, you don't pay more for one movie and less for another. I mean, generally speaking, although there is some controversy here, uh, a theater chain uh, is threatening to charge more for center seats than uh, closer or further away side seats. And this has uh, created a huge controversy of like, exploiting But, people with less money so that they can experience movies because movies are very I, democratic you go if in, i go if i go yeah. to a big concert house here and and want to listen to a concert there's good and bad seats and more expensive and less expensive seats and, Yes. Why not? Why not do this in cinemas? <laughs> I guess they're going to try, but uh, th there is uh, a lot of pushback on that. Yeah. Um, but but generally speaking, so uh, it, it's also interesting just to see a little bit of the, or as much as you're interested in, in in the business of yep. these, because to exhibit in these spaces, like Parry Photo, for example, you know the the galleries have to spend you know 150 to 250 thousand dollars for a booth so how much do they have to sell is selling necessary is the um uh, i guess the the meeting of people and the the kind of accumulation of potential buyers worth the investment i don't know because i'm not in the gallery business but um All of these things kind of come together in these very large, uh, well, we can call them art markets, we can call it uh, collective art exhibits. Um, and, they, you know, they happen worldwide. Um, Shanghai Photo, for example, which I think happens in April, uh, I'll be exhibiting there as part of the three artists working in. Um, I'm going to exhibit digital works alongside of two who are exhibiting kind of classic landscapes, Chinese. And so, uh, you know, those who are there, I'm not going to go there, but, but those who are experiencing my work there are just going to, they may not have ever probably known of me. Um, so I do have a magazine article in China so you're about one of my these, work, yeah. but I... You're one of these young, I don't understand young, what they're saying. You're one of these young whippersnapper newcomers there. That's it. Yeah. You know, I'll take it as I, I see it, you know. But. So, sounds exciting. So, um, yeah, and, and that kind of brings us to a, a bit to the topic of the day, because uh, in the title it already says, the, the well, I don't know the exact title yet, but it has something to do with making... But bundling up work and yeah, making we'll call it, it a collection, or, a or collection, a, fo a folio, or a folio, yeah, yes, um, and it, it it's a little bit different, as you know, and I know, you know, you can have a, a um, just a great moment out there with your camera and take a beautiful photo, and one that you're extremely proud of, and one that bears very little um, relationship to your previous work. It's just what it is. And yet you celebrate it and, and it, it's beautiful. Um, and if you then want to repeat the, the style, feel, form, you know, all, all of the things that went into it, even if it's an accident to recreate it or recreate in that particular style or subject matter, um, you then have to go out with a little more consciousness and... and um, That will be that will be my first question. So, um, as a, as an artist, and, and I see you as an artist. I see myself more, let's say, as a craftsman. Um, 
when you create a folio, let's call it a collection of uh, an album, uh, 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 an exhibition. Mm -hmm. this, this is what I always keep in the back of my mind um, when I hear porf when I hear folio. I think like an exhibition, something that works together in a closed context somehow. Mm -hmm. um, when you do that, uh, what is your approach? Because I see my approach often looking backwards at what I have and how things fit together. Like um, I'll 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 find something that I find noteworthy and then I go, oh, let me see if I have things along those lines, similar things. So um, some of that is forward looking, like looking at to at how to create more of that. But there is a there is a, a, a pretty big aspect of looking back and seeing if I can tickle out um, things that work together from my past is that which which of the sides are you on which which direction do you go more oh i lean much more forward into creating a folio uh, like for me a single shot it could be a happy accident for me um but is the is the happy accident kind of the the trigger the 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 condensation point of um th th this is oh this is uh, this i like this feeling i want to get more of that I think sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. Um, for, exam if, for example, if you're making work that is based on your imagination, in other words, uh, staged photography, uh, where you'll, you know, um, Gregory Crudson as an example, where you have an, uh, an image in your head uh, and a mood and a lighting set up and, 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 and they kind of uh, maybe an, an epic kind of space and you're going to design the photo you're going to set up the production you're going to take the photo uh, and then you're going to have another image in your head and you're going to want to repeat the process not necessarily the the um, compositional aspect of your previous work but to create a similar mood and each of these pictures that you create will then feed or support the other. So if you see one picture, it will give you a sort of a sense of, in this case, say, loneliness or isolation, whatnot. But when you see a collective, the reinforcement of the impact of in the individual pieces, I think, becomes uh, stronger. Um, on the other hand, if you stumble across um, something that you are very pleased with in your own work, um, then I think you want to explore why you are happy with it and, and then try to recreate it. And if you can do it again, then you start to feed a folio of work, each of which supports the, the um, intention of the first one. The very first image may not have had the same intention, but all those that come afterwards mm. does. How, how important is it for you that the different folios correspond with each other, work with each other, uh, or, or will you do separate folios that are completely different, completely different styles and, and explorations? Yeah, well, for, for me, I, I work in, in folios as a silo. In other words, I, I, I don't really stop working within each silo, but but it's it's where I am in, in my own kind of flow. So for example, I'll go, I want to revisit something that I've done, say, two or three years ago, but with a slightly different approach. And I'll... That would I'll, have been my next question. How far do they span? Or do, do you have like seven things in parallel and then you just let let one sit for years and come back because something reminds me of oh wait this could yeah, become part of I, that sometimes i do that but i mean going going into you know the the previous kind of question uh is like someone like um ernst and hilda Lutcher? Becher, Becher 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 the pronunciation um, is really important here <laughs> Sprechen nicht nur Deutsch. Verstehe. Anyway. Um, 
the, the, the point is what they're trying to do is find those towers or constructs or buildings, edifices, architectural elements that feed their own sense of aesthetic. So their sense of folio is, is sort of hunting and gathering. So they will be looking for And this that. is, by the way, a, 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 a pristine example of, of folios that are very tightly knit yes. by the Becher, the Becher um, uh, couple, well, married couple. They had, they had these old industrial uh, machinery buildings in, in Germany and around. And they, they, they made these, yeah, it's, it's just, just the fact that there is so much of the same thing, but it's different, but it's same in, in some way, is, is, a, is a joy in itself. Um, exactly. That, that's very much the point that I'm, that I'm trying to make. In other words, the collection of their work is so much more powerful than any individual shot. And, and almost consciously, the, the shots are done in very soft light. There's very low contrast. I don't even think there's a white or a black in the print. They're very kind of soft gray. One would almost say they're very undramatic. They're very documentary and scientific photos, albeit with a, a heightened sense of consciousness as they took them and as their work developed because they've developed over decades the total of I, i'm going to guess there's a thousand of their their prints so certainly several hundred right of of their images um, that unify with a solid aesthetic that make you look at the individual works with a whole different Uh, attitude because each of them are a version of the other and yet very different and yet yeah. I, I, I'm very impressed by that kind of work okay so so in the far west of Germany in uh, Duisburg there is an old steel works kind of thing that is now a cultural center and but the, the old buildings are still there and um, the Becher There's an there's an ongoing exhibition on the outside of a big machine hall, mm. which uh, has like the it's one of the it's one of the biggest exhibitions because you see these big towers, um, pretty much like uh, I don't know twenty foot high um, banners around the big building. Um, I'll have it on the screen here right yeah, now. Yeah, I see it. It's great. It is. It's it's an amazing sight to see, and it's it's yeah. It's a fun place to be in general. So, so industrial yeah. art in an in industrial context. Do you work uh, in folios at all? Like, do you work in a collective way? Te and it could be just a technical exploration. It doesn't yes. necessarily have to be. Uh, and we, we didn't even talk about subject. In other words, there oh, are yes. the, the, the proximity one has to, for example... Bruce Davidson's, you know, affinity to Coney Island gangs and whatnot, and, and, and gaining their trust allowed him into a certain cultural uh, milieu that allowed him to take a series, a folio of individual snapshots, call it, that are beautifully evocative, but taken together, they give you a complete picture yep. um, of, of the cultural moment that he was in. And so it's not just sort of formalism, it's not just technical, but it's also subject. Yeah. But I think the point really is that the sum of the parts are greater than the individual part itself. And that, and that, is, that is my finding exactly. I have a, I have a few examples of that. Um, none of them are like meant for bigger bigger exhibition but um, smaller projects that came together I have, a, I have a series of portraits for example let me put this on the screen a series of portraits um, portrait sessions that I took through uh, a screen like mm -hmm. remote and this is not even pandemic this is way pre-pandemic I think this must be 10 years ago um, with like a with a screen that is not a retina screen so if, if you And it's shot with a macro lens, a very mm -hmm. a weird yeah. macro lens. So you end up with not just the, the 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 portrait being pixelated and different. It's also the dynamic is different because the subjects don't feel 
like they sit in front of a camera. They sit in front of their little video camera that's built into their laptops. Um, and in addition, it also has myself on there, usually out of focus, um, but w myself with the camera because that is what these video conferencing systems do. They have a little yeah. square with yourself in it. So it's, it's a kind of a mixture of um, different... That's, that's yeah. just one example, but this, this was a little technical... Um, uh, let's say a, a little technical exercise where I found that that is an interesting concept and putting these together individually as you said they're not that interesting but as soon as you put them together and, and present them in a in a in a way that holds them together that gives them some some sure. frame to exist in then they become something different yes you know I, th I from I, my very very first exhibit which was in 74, 76, I forget, um, was a folio taken, you know, head and shoulder portraits, large format camera of, you know, 40 artists um, staring into the lens with almost no expression, or I tried to get every sense of projected emotion out of their pose, like almost topographical. How do you do that? That was the work, right? That was the work. In other words, try to express nothing. And yet what comes out is very much part of the personality. And that was the exploration. In fact, the poster uh, to the show had no photograph on it. It was just a descriptive of the topography of the human face written by um, a friend, a writer, um, Tom Sherman. And... and um, the folio, it, it wasn't the individual photos, which were interesting in and of themselves as a large format portrait. But given, you know, 40 of them in a gallery, um, it, it had a very different, almost eerie sense of staring. And, you know, there, there, there was, it, it was strange. And I remember it very, very, very well, um, the mood of it. And, and so I, I, from then on, I, I tended also to look when one looks at paintings in, in a gallery, just a collection of paintings, it's usually the artist has explored a certain style. And those styles will change over the years, uh, maybe even radically change. From yeah, Picasso being a great example of someone who could do very, very kind of classical imagery in terms of his uh, technical abilities, and yet then evolve to the blue period or the cubist period or all, all of those things that uh, represented different periods of his life. And when you see them, uh, those collections together, they just show, showed an, an exploration of a style as much as an expression of a style. And I think that's kind of where I'm going here, is, is the deeper exploration of what makes a, an image valuable is something that I would encourage all photographers uh, to do, I have I have a, a yeah you could call it a, a folio project, which is a video project that has been going on since 2010. So it's like 12, 13 years now, and this is this is my one minute in a life series that I started back then, and it's just it's just videos, one minute video <laughs> snippets of very mundane things like a a, a cup of. Tea, a tea bag um, um, steeping in a cup of tea and the, the color is slowly emerging or um, what else do we have uh, let me see yeah a porthole on a ship right one minute just to look at a porthole in a ship S see, stuff. When, you when you have 90, 90 of these you'll have a movie just <laughs> together I could, I, like could, I could put this together a, a few of those I have, I have edited but most of them are just put the camera somewhere uh, like, like a machine that makes wool for example um, why not I, so. I, I love these I think this is absolutely sensational uh, it's kind of a a reverse Koyana Squatsy <laughs> Sort of, sort of, and again, if if I have the time, if something I, that I find it doesn't even have to be super remarkable. Sometimes it's no. just a, sometimes it's just it's just a, a branch in the wind. 
yeah. moving uh, with the leaves uh, moving slightly. They're kind of. Stuff. I think that those are the strong ones. Is to yeah. take a moment and look at the, the micro of it is is really really quite beautiful. So yeah. the last one I done actually it's it's, it's time to do some more. Last one yes, was in February twenty nineteen, so it needs a bit more. Uh, yeah, but yeah, so so yeah, the the idea of the folio, totally, absolutely, I'm I'm behind yeah. that. Yeah, and 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 also you have if, you have some interesting stuff out there. Let me let me bring that one up. Yeah, here's um, a here's a, a folio of of um, of work that uh, that I did in Big Sur. Um, you know, we we had to have some. Big which Sur for things. those outside of the United States, it's not just a, a name of an operating system; it is an actual place. Yeah, Big Sur is on the uh, California coast. It's a stunning, stunning um, area of thousand foot cliffs and remarkable beaches. And, and, and apparently uh, it can be quite misty there. Uh, it, it can be. It's very difficult lately to get there because the road often washes away, isolating it as sort of Ouch. an inland island. And um, But I started to take pictures uh, early morning when it was foggy and when there was obviously no people there. And I was kind of, A, I was smitten by the the quiet of it the, the sense of, of of kind of how it must have been you know a million years ago say because mm -hmm. it's it's very primal that landscape as well um and i would just revisit it whenever it was foggy i would just go there and then of course you know developing the the color palette for it um you know using a little bit of cyan in the shadows and um and just kind of unifying it uh, with a with a kind of a sense of um, that's, that's the visual yeah. visually bringing it together. Yes, I mean you know again I w I would only photograph it or this particular um, folio in dense fog, um, you know over a couple of years I guess, and and uh, not duplicate images that I had already done, um, and. I so much more appreciate even, you know, it's my own work, but I appreciate the collective of it. It feels, in a way, maybe more permanent, um, a, a kind of disposition of, the, of, of that particular environment. Um, and I, you know, in my kind of AI work and in my kind of more digital work, I, I often work or almost exclusively work in folios um, just because uh, I like to explore what they mean and how or if they have a strong unity, and if so, why? What is it about them that feels like they are related, like cousins or brothers, parents? And then, of course, as an artist, you will also have always have to ask yourself the question, what others will make of that because you are the one who took the pictures you have the experience um that the others don't have all they have is a two-dimensional picture so well yeah that's right so, I mean, so, so for you that this must this must also be a, a process of reduction to uh, to, to understand the essence of it that yeah. is different from your own uh from your own experience there oh yeah i mean at this point i look at them objectively and um it's time you know, helps yeah uh, you know i've always felt that photographs just age very well no matter what they are so let let's, let's try to formalize the ways of uh, bringing things together into a, into a folio so we yeah. we talked about technique or, or let's say tool set right large format camera for example mm -hmm. has uh, creates a specific look we're talking about um, well, in that case, film that yeah. has a specific look to it, a specific feel to it. Um, in that folio right now, we're talking time of day when you shoot it, because that will have similar weather characteristics. Not always, but um, or in the morning, there's a good chance that things are a bit more similar. Um, you talk about editing, as in changing the the or or modifying the tint in the shadows slightly to 
yeah. help come help this come together. Um, what else do we have? They're not compositionally uh, changed. In other words, they're full frame. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the light itself is consistent. Um, the color is is a is sort of an overall look up. You know, a lot that um, that I liked, and I just applied it overall because I just felt that it uh, enhanced the mood. Um, you know, in real life, that would look a little more blue, I guess, to the eye. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's you know, it's it's a relationship between what was there and what I saw and what I created and what I captured um, with a in my view, a light touch because I didn't, I didn't really over manipulate it. it, it I feel it, it's very much what came out of the camera. Um, you know, I have other folios that are, again, they're landscapes, but they're much stronger in terms of the uh, fingerprints of the creator, um, i.e. me, on it. So they are designed not to be realistic but to kind of push the boundaries of what I saw, and and again in a unified way, and and, and so that and that goes that goes into the content then, because what we talked about so far is more like the external things, the color, the the tools, and so on. But then of course, what's in the photos itself can uh, can can like like with my video sure. one minute in the life of uh, Chris the series, which. <clears throat> they don't have anything to do with each other other than that there are videos and that they have this one minute limit. Well, that's but all that's, there is. That's significant. Uh, don't just rush over that uh, because the, the piece, as I see it, I react to it as, as an exploration of time, of small moments of time that you find everywhere. If I was critically writing about it, you know, <laughs> that would be the exploration. In other words, what in a minute can fascinate us if we just stop and look carefully at or a tea bag. Or bore us to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but one could say it, if one's bored, uh, one's not looking hard enough. Oh, and, and I mean, I grew up pre-internet. Boredom is a very useful thing, and we don't have nearly enough of it these days. So. Uh, I, would, I would concur, because uh, hunting looking, um, drawing into the, yourself into the world um, in a, uh, using that muscle. And a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of great yeah. art comes from boredom. I or, would fe say. <laughs> or fear. <laughs> or fear. Well, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I guess let's, let's wrap this up here. Um, enough, enough about the folio. People go out and work on your own future of photography by yeah. thinking create in folios. Yeah, create a folio. Create a folio. Start with a group of five images um, and, and expand it. And keep yeah. that, that as something in your back pocket. So as you move through the world and you see an image that would fit, it, it no, it's no longer a single image. It's just something for your collection. And that's, you just keep building on that and sooner, uh, and, you know, sooner than later, you're going to have um, a collective of work that's going to inform each individual piece that will possibly surprise you in its impact. So, Very well said. Let's move on to our picks of the week. Um, I'll present mine first. It's a short video by Vox. They have a, they have a video about... <laughs> Um, the mystery of the same sky postcards. Have you heard of that? No. So there's there's this collector, and he uh, he collects postcards, uh, as in like stacks sure. of old postcards from garage sales and that kind of stuff. And um, and uh, then he started to categorize them. And at one point, he realized that these postcards show the same <laughs> sky over and over and over wow. again. And it's wow. old postcards from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and they, um, or 50s and 60s, I guess, and they share the same sky. And it's like, or a, a set of different skies, but very much repeated. Those are the kind of postcards you would buy at a motel or at a, 
wherever. And oh, um, and this and this this video, oh. it's like a ten minute video. It goes it goes down into researching how this came to be, and they talk to a postcard historian, and they. Um, and they, well, they finally find find out. I'm not going to spill the beans here, but it's it's a fascinating little story. Oh, my guess is the printer or the the manufacturer. Of found course, <laughs> yeah, it's like of course. Why buy I mean, another sky? You have two of them. Well, <laughs> the sky we we, the sky. we 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 so, someone wants us to print postcards for their hotel, and we it's need to spice day. it up. Use so that we need sky. to spice yeah, it up it. and. There's that's this is a very a very interesting use of stock, especially when you notice it. Then it seems to that this is what happened to him. He noticed a couple of duplicates, and then they, he found them everywhere. Yes, so. and for irony and humor and impact, each individual postcard with their sky. Well, you know, okay, what it is, but and of course seen together. <laughs> Well, and and that is another kind of well, more accidental folio because there, there's like there's entire Flickr albums now that have these same sky postcards in oh, them, like fantastic. a hundred of them in one fan. spot. It's fun. We'll it's, investigate it's, deeply. It is awesome. So that would be my pick of the week, and you, br you bring in a shameless plug again. I did. I, I I've. <laughs> Brought in a, a plug for myself, but it's it's also it, it was made with uh, um, a company called uh, Kunst Matrix. How's that for my German? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And uh, anyone could could basically do this. Uh, this happens to be my own work, uh, but but um, it is. It's basically a virtual exhibition space that is navigable. And um, and a delight. Um, and it shows different folios again. Different folios. And you could experience it like this flat, or you can go inside the gallery and see how they work. If you enter the gallery, um, go, I think, further up. Enter... No. Uh, I can't do you full screen here because then the whole yeah, yeah. thing, the whole video here breaks down, uh, unfortunately. But you, yeah, but it, there, there's a way when you'd see it on your computer there's to viewing enter room. the viewing room. Yes. Oh, there we and, go. And there's, no. you know, many different artists share this. There's there we me. Go. Um, but it, uh, it is, uh, let's see. There. Enter, enter exhibition. The exhibition space. And oh, can, now we're in 3D. Uh, there we go. Now I get uh, it. I didn't it did it wasn't apparent immediately. Uh, so there's your 3D space. With let's say it's an exhibition. It's a proper it exhibition. A exhibition. With architecture, with light, with you can click inside things, you can you can of course read about things. Hey, I like this. And, and I, this around. just went live this week, so. Um, and then and then this would this would I presume also work inside a VR headset and things like that. I assume, though. I, I don't would have assume. One, but <laughs> I well, so. why not? It's, <laughs> it's not too far in the future that we have all yeah. have these things. So. But, but uh, you know, that's uh, I, I just cool. thought Kunstmatrix, very good. Kunstmatrix. I'll have to check them out. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, that is the end of this episode. The folio and folios everywhere. Now, now looking at the at art through that lens, it's like, hey, of course it's everywhere. You can yeah, you can see it. Just just go to any any exhibition and you will see folios and folios. That's the difference between a group exhibition and a solo exhibition. Yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, we are gonna be back with, I guess, the three of us next week. Um, and until then, you can find us online at thefuturephotography.com or TFOP now on the tweeters. And um, yeah, that's it for this week. Everyone, take care and have a good one. Bye bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Thank you.